Louisa. I'm from Scotland, but I've lived in Madrid, Spain for 14 years now and my children go to school here in Spain. And ever since my children started school, I have noticed so many differences between the schooling system in Spain and the schooling system in the UK. And today I'm going to tell you all about those differences. So the first thing is, in the UK I think kids get to go to nursery when they're three or four and they get to go to nursery for a few hours a day and then they start school when they're five. Here in Spain, it's completely different. They actually get to go to free nursery when they are one. And from the age of one to three, they can go to this place called La Casita from nine until one every day. Then, when they're three, they start infant school and they go to infant school from three to six. And then, when they're six years old, they start primary school. This little casita and infant school is not obligatory. And a lot of people don't send them to La Casita because they think one is far too young. But almost everyone does send their child to infant school when they're three. Because in infant school, they teach the children how to read and write. So if they don't go to infant school, they're gonna start primary and they're gonna be the only ones in their class that don't know how to read and write. Teachers in La Casita, and in infant school are normally, I mean it depends on the person, but they're normally really loving and caring and they're always hugging the kids and giving them kisses and cuddles. It's amazing. And at least when I was a kid, teachers were not like that. They were never touchy-feely. And I don't know if that's because in the UK, like teachers are not allowed to hug their pupils or they're not allowed to touch their pupils. But here in Spain, no. <laughs> There's no rules regarding that. Teachers can hug their kids as much as they like and I think that's lovely. Then you have private schools. So in the UK, private schools, you know, they're fee paying but they also always offer scholarships or grants to maybe 5% of pupils. In Spain that doesn't exist. You have private schools but they're all fee paying and there are no scholarships and no grants which I think is sad. It means that if you really want to send your child to private school and your child's really clever and they could get in through a scholarship, that option just doesn't exist. So in Spain you have public schools, you have private schools, and then you have religious schools. And religious schools are a halfway point. The government finances religious schools up to a certain point and then the parents have to pay a little bit as well. But it's normally between fifth day and 300 euros a month and then if you want your child to go to private school it's 600 and up a month and then of course public schools are just completely free. In Spain the option of giving your kids a packed lunch does not exist. When they go to school they can either eat in the school canteen or you can pick them up and bring them home for lunch. Some schools their timetable is nine until two and then at two o'clock the kids have lunch so you can either pick your kids up at two bring them home, give them lunch at home and that's then finished for the day. Or from two o'clock until four o'clock, they can go to the school canteen, they can eat in the canteen and then you pick them up at four o'clock. But some schools don't have that timetable. Some schools have classes from nine till one, they eat from one until three and then they have more classes from three until half four. And if your child's school has that kind of timetable, it makes it very difficult to pick them up at lunchtime, because you've got to pick them up at one, bring them home, give them lunch, and then drop them off again at three <laughs> to continue their classes. And it's a hassle. And that's a shame because what if you don't want to have to pay for school lunches? It would be great to just give your child a packed lunch. Or what if your kid doesn't like school lunches? In that case, it would be great to give them a packed lunch. But that option just doesn't exist. And I think it doesn't exist because in Spain, they believe lunch is a really important meal. A lot of people will have three courses for their lunch. I think that's why you either have to have a really good three course meal in the school canteen, or your parents have to take you home and give you a really good lunch at home. But the idea of eating a sandwich for lunch is just not good enough. I briefly mentioned this before, how children learn to read and write in infant school. So they start at three years old. I didn't start to learn the letters and the numbers until I started primary school when I was five. I think five is a good age. I think three is far too young. I just think a three-year-old <laughs> should be playing 
not learning to read and write. And I think it's really bad because when you teach a child something that they're not ready for, the child can end up just really hating that subject in the future. I mean, in infant school, yeah, they do a lot of singing and dancing and games, but they do begin with the academic side of things as well. And then when children do start primary school at the age of five or six, they start to have exams. They have actual exams. <laughs> they get marks out of 10, 10 being the highest. And for me, that is insane. I don't think I started to actually do exams until I was in maybe primary four, primary five. But here in Spain, the academic side, they just start it all so young. Here in Spain, there are a lot of bilingual schools. They give 50% of subjects in Spanish and 50% of subjects in English. I really don't like these bilingual schools and so many people don't like them because the subjects that are given in English are not given by native teachers. So these Spanish kids are learning English but with a Spanish accent. Also these teachers didn't study English, these are like science teachers so their level of English is not good and they make a lot of grammatical mistakes when they talk in English and these kids are picking up on all these grammatical mistakes and the poor kids they end up not learning English properly and they end up not learning the subjects properly either because they don't understand it. They don't understand the teachers when they talk in English. I don't think there's a lot of bilingual schools in the UK. I think they're mostly private whereas these bilingual schools in Spain are all public. One thing that I find really weird here in Spain is you actually have to buy all the school materials <laughs> and books, even in a public school. I mean, when I went to school, we were given all of our books, all of our jotters, everything we were given for free. The only thing that we had to buy was a school bag and your pencil case and that was it. And then I went to a private school for a little bit and the only thing extra that we had to buy in the private school were the books. But they still gave us all the jotters and like all the material for free. Whereas here in Spain, even in a public school, you have to obviously buy a school bag and pencil case, but you have to buy all the jotters that your children use, you have to hand in a massive big block of sheets of paper so that whenever your child is given photocopies, you've handed in the paper that's been used. You have to buy their school textbooks. The government gives you a grant for maybe 50% of the books, but the other 50% you have to buy. And any kind of arts and crafts, that they do. You have to buy that material. I mean, it's just everything. You have to buy it all. And I just find that very strange because I think if the government is funding these public schools, then why does the government not fund the materials as well? And now that we're in the middle of a pandemic, children from five years and up have to wear a mask at school all day long, even when they're playing outside in the playground. I know in the UK, children don't have to start wearing a mask until 12. I don't think they have to wear a mask when they're in the playground or outside, but here in Spain they do. And it's been like that ever since the pandemic started. And the final thing I've noticed about schools here in Spain is the emphasis on memorizing. So instead of teaching children how to analyze and critical thinking, it's more memorizing. Even from the age of five, they'll be sent these huge big poems that they have to just memorize. And I remember when I was at school, it wasn't like that. The methodology that they use in schools here in Spain is very different. That's it, that's all the differences. I absolutely love living in Spain. I don't think I would ever go back to the UK, but when it comes to the education system, I do prefer the British education system. There are British schools here in Spain that are full of native British teachers and that follow the British curriculum. But those schools are all private, they are ridiculously expensive. I think it's something like 1,000 a month per child. I've got four children, so I will not be sending them there. Also, since we are a British family and we speak English at home all the time, I don't want my children to be speaking English at school as well. I want them to go to a Spanish school and be speaking Spanish and learn Spanish. I wouldn't send my children to a British school in Spain, but at least that option exists. But anyway, even though I'm not that happy with the Spanish schooling system, I'm really happy living in Spain, so 
I can't complain too much. Any guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you're thinking of moving to Spain and sending your children to school in Spain, hopefully this has answered some of your questions. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.